something like that. And we worked on the idea of court. So the problem was that um, uh, junior doctors or resident doctors now rotate um, every four, four to six months throughout their training. And a few weeks before they rotate, they get an email room um, with we haven't started your time yet. Because oh, fine. Because the technology is not working. So. I'm, I'm cheating. I'm getting extra sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we, I think what we'll do is I'll give you a check for it. Yeah. So, uh, this is us. Um, and I'm Rabbi. This is Olaf. Hello, Olaf. Um, so, you get an email, something like this, uh, which says, please find attached um, all the stuff that a few weeks before you rotate. These are all the forms I looked and read that you have to fill out and return back. Immunizations, occupational health, um, lots of things. Second year, if you change hospital each time, you get more through core training and specialty training, so it can be more than 20 times over your training career. Um, Bob, who's a doctor, that's what he says. Um, he says he spends hours filling out poorly designed forms for new jobs, um, multiple forms, and that even comes up with mistakes from the hospital database afterwards as well, which means there's manual subscription going on somewhere. Uh, from the HR manager, they have to send out the email, they have to sort through those forms, and usually they're an Excel or a Word document, so they're just manually transcribed. So our aim was, um, let's see if we can get the employees, or the, the resident doctors, to enter the data once and keep it up to date, and the employer receives up-to-date information in a usable format, structured quickly, and, and also they get sort of up-to-date notifications as well. Uh, to open the demo. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, it should be two types of users. It's like doctor and organization. Doctor can uh, log in and uh, fill up the form. Uh, when he submits the form, it's going to be uh, explained all the information that you screen and he can update this. And also, uh, if the organization will, will log in, so this is how the form looks like after. Uh, if the organization will log in, uh, they can look up for a doctor, and also they can see the current doctor they have now. Sorry, yeah. So uh, the solution uh, for the problem was uh, doctor entered the uh, data once and uh, have its um, 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 uh, resident doctor passport and after that organization can ask access for this information and doctor can give it give this access or not so you do it only once or you also can edit information but you don't don't have to do it constantly all the time um, so the process is uh, user create account and uh, uh, upload information uh, organization search for its uh, GMT number, <laughs> and uh, so uh, doctor grants access uh, for this information. Uh, so uh, we um, uh, use SIFBase for our data, so we uh, keep separate for our doctors and the patients. Thank you very much. Hi, very good presentation. Uh, sounds like a very painful situation. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, one question about uh, where the data is saved and how uh, what the mechanisms are to be able to give access to that data. Yeah, you mentioned briefly that the the request the organisation requests access from the doctor. Is that would you like some more information about that? Yeah. yeah, so we thought we thought about this a little bit. Obviously, in the constraints of the weekend, we we built it as a server-side storage, uh, and it would be uh, either well, I think cloud-based. Um, however, the, we on on a personal device, and then the access would be granted, and it would upload a copy to them. But then there's obviously issues with uploading up-to-date information. So possibly server-side, but then grant access. Okay, so you didn't get that bit built today. No, okay. no, that's fine. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, it's just a simple question, really. Are the information asked the same for all the deans? So do the forms change, say, between London and Leicester and Edinburgh yeah. and so on? Or? It's a good question. 
question. Um, so I, I, I worked in Birmingham, Yorkshire, and Wales um, as a resident community doctor, and the information is identical. They want to know immunization status, my address, previous employment, uh, car registration, you know, things that don't update. Um, so we went through two emails, and the data set was the data set was the same. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any way of thinking about how this would link into ERS, which, so ESR, sorry, the um, system for that all so doctors have? Yeah. Is there a way of thinking about how this goes into ESR, the electronic staff record? I've thought about it. Um, we're not lucky enough to have ESR in, uh, in Wales in the same way. It doesn't hold all the database and all the trainees' data. Um, something that they're looking at but hopefully if this the back end of this which we have built the, the data architecture is structured so hopefully we'd be able to they'd be able to pull that data through and use it however they want the organization so if they want to upload it straight to have a pipeline for uploading it straight to ESR hopefully that would be possible. Yes? Uh, do you have a sense for how much time is waiting uh, on this? So on not, not just on the doctor side yeah. but on the... Yeah it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a black box Bit of a black box, we're not quite sure, um, but I would imagine manually transcribing, say, hundreds of doctors rotate through a hospital in a year, um, manually transcribing Excel and Word documents into possibly another Excel database. Not sure again, and it's definitely variable. It must be hours and hours and hours. I've got a quick question. Why NHS staff record, lots of work happening about that staff transport? How does this fit with it? I'm not aware of too much about it, to be honest, okay. so don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs>